It's fall, y'all, and I'm here to talk about wardrobe. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to the Indigo and Stuff show, the show for the behind the scenes, in between, and all the other stuff. It's the middle of fall. I like clothes. We can't walk around naked, so we're gonna talk about clothes and what we're wearing this fall. Specifically, I thought it'd be fun to do a trendier timeless with some of the trends we're seeing this fall with certain items. I love when people do the trendier timeless kind of thing and just put some fashion predictions out in the world. I'm not a fashionista. Like, I I do look pretty good today. I'm not gonna lie to you. I do like my look today. But I, most days I'm thinking comfy, cozy. I'm just putting on, you know, something that passes as a little bit more than PJs to like work, but it's all good. That's because I work from home. I feel like I would honestly slay office outfits if I was back in a working environment. I did work in an office a couple years ago, pre-pandemic. And I would wear like Ann Taylor thrifted stuff and like try to really like be cool, but like edgy office girl. And it, it almost never worked. But I feel like nowadays, I could say, I could say a little bit. I am so excited though for this one because it's just a fun episode. I hope you can pop this on while you're cleaning out your closet, folding laundry, or just going for a drive. But maybe you want to watch it because you know, I'm going to be showing you some pieces from my closet and evaluating whether I think they're trendy or timeless, as well as just kind of going through some data and looking at the trends this fall and discussing them with you. Are we nerdy or what? Let's do it. <laughs> Real fast, before we hop in, I do want to shout out to Primally Pure. This is an ad, guys. This is an advertisement. Um, these are empty, by the way. This is the packaging that everything came in. It's super cute, but they were a really great skincare company, and they sent me a little, a little goodie box. I am so excited. Like, am I an influencer now? I got a goodie box. Um, but the reason that I'm really excited to kind of chat about their brand and try their products is because they are one of the most clean ingredient, low tox, no tox, organic companies you could ever find. And I mean, it reflects it in the price. So you get what you pay for. I really think that that's true with all kinds of stuff. And Primely Pure looks amazing. I tried this clay mask last night. I could honestly eat all the ingredients in here. I don't think I'm gonna try, but it's like, essential oils, orange, lemon, vitamin E, raw honey is the first ingredient. Silver, can we eat silver? I don't know. Turmeric powder, witch hazel, like all this stuff is so clean. You can read and pronounce all the ingredients. And then I also got their um, cleansing oil for skin. So, you know, like when you're done with makeup, put some of that on and then it kind of really gets in the pores. It smells amazing. Same thing, I can eat all these ingredients. And I'm also gonna try their deodorant. Now, with a natural deodorant, as some of my granola girlies know, it doesn't always prevent the stank, and I'm a sweaty girl, so I've tried so many natural deodorants, and you just, you know, basically waste $15, but I really hope and think this one's going to be different. It does smell really good. I smelled this yesterday, but mm, okay, I got the vanilla and citrus one, but anyway, I do have a code for you if you want 10% off as a thanks for listening to my show, you can do India and Stuff 10 at Primally Pure checkout. So you can try your own super clean beauty products. Let me know what you think. But for now, we're gonna chat all about fashion. I'm gonna grab some pieces and we're gonna discuss whether they are trendy or timeless. And you can let me know in the comments what you think. I didn't have too much caffeine in my system right now. Okay, all right, here we go. All right, very first on the chopping block, knee-high boots. Now, these are my Tommy Hill figures that I thrifted last fall. Very excited to have thrifted these. Um, I love them, they're great quality. I've worn them a couple times out. I just need to kind of like keep them from wrinkling. I think I'm gonna stuff them with like bags so they don't get wrinkly. I love a good knee-high boot. I do think there has been times, if we think of like 2010, 2012, like when I was in high school, where these were super, super trendy, just like any knee-high boot. And then there's times where I feel like it falls out and there's not as much going on. But I think I'm gonna say timeless because I really feel like, especially for fall, a knee-high boot with like a short, you know, skirt or shorts even, 
first of all, it's so Taylor Swift coded, but it's also just a very classy fall look. And it's a fun way to like transition between summer and fall, kind of cover a little leg, but show a little thigh. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm going to say trendy. I hope everyone's okay. There's an ambulance going by. All right, sticking on the shoe kick, I want to evaluate the loafer next. Now, I love the way these look, which is why I thrifted them. I love them so much, but they're not very comfortable, at least the specific pair. Um, caused a lot of blisters last time I wore them, or I can only really walk very short distances and then I'm starting to get pain. But I do think a loafer in general is timeless. Maybe not this specific style, because this one has like a chunky, you know, like butt to the foot, <laughs> butt to the foot. Um, but I do think a loafer in general, like a black or brown or neutral loafer is a very timeless fall staple for the wardrobe, but maybe not that exact style that I have. All right. The next thing I'd like to discuss is the see-through sheer top. So this is actually one I thrifted in San Diego recently. You can see it's like completely sheer, but I do think this would be so cute with like a little bralette underneath and a little skirt, um, or maybe a corset over top of it, a strapless shirt over top of it. There's so many ways to style it. I'm really excited to wear it this season. However, I do think in general, the sheer fabric is definitely a trendy thing, especially in the last, I'd say the last year and a half, we've really seen a lot of the sheer um, fabric with like weird and funny like patterns on it. Like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like swirly slime pattern or like Jupiter, <laughs> like all over those. We've seen a lot of those sheer dresses, sheer tops. Uh, I do really think it's a cute one and fun to try. But if you're like pinching pennies and trying to make a timeless wardrobe, I don't think this is something you have to include. All right, next up we have our fall staples, a pullover quarter length and a shacket. I think personally, a shacket is trendy. Bum, bum, bum. I think when it comes to fall fashion, this is like very modern and something that we'll see a lot maybe going forward. But I don't know if a shacket is as timeless as a jacket, like a real leather jacket. And I'm going to show you some of mine that I have. I think a jacket just feels more structured and it feels like one of those evergreen pieces. You're always going to want to have that in your closet. The shacket is a great piece. I just do think it's trendy. This one's actually from the brand Able. I have a code for them as well. I'll put that in the show notes. Um, they're one of my favorite sustainable brands. They empower women to have ethical wages and it's like a fair trade company. So I really am a huge fan of Able. but this is the shacket. And then this is um, just a quarter, kind of like quarter zip, but just a pullover. I think I think this will always be timeless. Maybe not the Sherpa per se, but like I do think pullovers will always just be like that cozy fall staple. I'm just I'm just thinking back like Princess Diana and like that casual elevated streetwear look where you have just like a little quarter zip or a little quarter button, even on men. Like it's just such a staple piece that I feel like that one's going to be a timeless one for sure. All right, the next trend we're going to chat about is the all black look, especially in 2024. This is something we're seeing rising in popularity. I think the account data of a make it fashion show like, I don't know, a 60, 70 percent increase just recently of like all black monochrome outfits for fall seem to be very trendy right now. I personally think they will always be timeless. I think a monochrome look is pretty much always a safe bet, but specifically black. I don't think a monochrome black fit is ever going to go out of style. Very classy, especially for fall. It's like, ooh, I'm moody now. This is a top from Marcella or Marcella. I'm not really sure how to pronounce the brand. They're another sustainable fashion brand that I recently ordered from. So I actually haven't worn this just yet, but I'm really excited to try it on. Um, this is like the infinity top. So the reason I got it is because you can do the sleeves like 40 different ways or something like that. To me, that's going to mean like two or three ways. But I love something versatile that I'll have in my closet for a long time. So if you are looking for an all black look that you can have multiple uses out of, this might be a great option for you. I'll also include my discount and the link in the show notes. 
Unfortunately, we can't be naked. We've got to cover up somehow when we're running out and about, and what you wear matters just as much as where it came from. So if you're a sustainable shopper like me, I thought you might want to hear about this ethical women's brand I currently love. Marcella approaches the world of fashion as a minimalism with an edge, focusing on advancing women and girls globally across design, production approach, sustainability, and social impact. Trust me, I'm very picky when it comes to sustainability and ethical standards from brands and I'm all about this one. Their product lines are definitely timeless while still being effortlessly cool. This is a brand I am so stoked to get behind and want to share a little deal with you. As a thanks for listening to the show, take 10% off your purchase at Marcella by using India Jade Photo at checkout. That's India Jade Photo at checkout or just tap the show notes for the link. All right, denim isn't exactly a fall only staple, but I do think this fall specifically, we've seen a rise of like denim tops or a Canadian tuxedo, if you will. And I do think this was a little trendier last year. This fall, seeing people like Taylor Swift wear like the Medusa top to the Chiefs game that was denim. I think it's, I think it's just going to be a trend. I do like the idea of like playing with denim in more than just the jacket or the jeans, but I do think the idea of just like a denim top is definitely a trend for 2024, not necessarily like an all around timeless staple. I think regardless of what uh, Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears have to say about their iconic 2001 look. I don't think it's going to be like a timeless piece. All right. I'm kind of done getting things out of my closet, but I do have a couple more thoughts. This fall, it feels very trendy to wear cheetah print. I've never been a huge cheetah print girly, but I will say this is the first year that I, in my own, in my own heart, have been like, I could get behind a cheetah print something, maybe like a little pair of flats or a little scarf or something. I don't think I'm really going to ever be an all out cheetah print person, but I like the subtlety. I like a little subtlety in my cheetah. Um, but it is trendy this year. I, I'm i going to say it's going to stay trendy. I don't know if cheetah print or zebra print or any animal print will ever be timeless forever. Want to repeat, want to redo. I, I feel like cow print maybe like two years ago was pretty big. And I was like, okay, that could be cool. Um, but now I'm not even seeing it anywhere. And maybe you guys remember those like quilted jackets Again, it could come back. I just don't think it's one of those like forever. This is the look. Um, But another thing I think is trendy, and this one might ruffle some feathers. I think a layered sweater look is trendy, but sweaters will always be timeless, in my opinion. I think when people do like, you know, if I tossed a sweater on over this button down, like I actually have one right here. If I did like this, maybe not this button down because it's got, you know, the the design on it. But if I did like this scholastic looking academia sweater with the white collar popping out, that would be a pretty cute look. And I think that would be trendy, though, just because the sweaters every year tend to change. The layering idea is super fun and has some like academia roots. So it feels like an older. Is that a butterfly? No, piece of tape. Um, piece of tape on my window. I don't know a butterfly. But I, I feel like that's like a cute look, but you can style it any which way that can make it more trendy or timeless. But just a sweater. Here, I'll grab another cute one. Just a classic sweater is always going to be a fall staple. Look at that. This is actually from my neighbor. <laughs> um, we did a clothing swap and I love this one. It's a little cardigan. I don't feel like I look good at cardigans, but that's beside the point. I need to make my shoulders look like linebacker. It's fine. Okay, another trendy fall moment, I think. Black mules. Wait, did I talk about these? Yeah, I showed you my black mules. Black or any ballet flats. I think the ballet flat, ballet core is kind of in again. I It just reminds me of middle school, of wearing like uncomfortable flats with no arch support to my primary school and just feeling ugh, uncomfy all day. I also just think flats, while they have that elevated, potentially could be timeless look, I just, I don't know. I don't see them as timeless as like a heel or a pump or, you know, like a white sneaker or a knee high boot when it comes to fall. I feel like, 
I feel like flats kind of date uh, a year in my head. I'm like, oh, that's the year of the flat or something like that. Plus, practically, unless they're like good material, like leather or something, hey, so good. I don't think they last very well. I just feel like the, you know, fabric-y flats just get all gross and just not my vibe. Okay, another thing that I think is trendy and not timeless are the Uggs. <laughs> the Uggs. I think the, like, lower crop Uggs that are in right now, again, I'm just going to say they're trendy, but I do think those are more, have more potential because they remind me of that Birkenstock look where it's like, the OG Birkenstock. Please don't stag my shirt, sir. Um, that like, you know, kind of domey grandma sandal. That's timeless to me. That kind of transcends cultures and, you know, lines and everything. I just feel like so many people could wear that around the world. And that's like a timeless uh, look. So I think the Ugg, the slipper Ugg kind of gets close to that. But I just don't feel like it's the same amount of iconicness. And I think in like two or three years, we won't see them as much. I love the idea of wearing one. Like, of course I want to wear my slippers out of the house. I just don't think it's that trendy or timeless. Okay. I'm going to hop over to the timeless side. I think real leather will always, always, always be timeless. Now, as someone who cares about the earth and cares about the creatures on it, I don't know what the right answer is or what I like believe about using animals in fashion, like their skin. Obviously, I do think it's different from case to case. Like if someone's like, oh, this coat is made of mink. I'm like, did we have to kill the mink? But if someone's like, oh, this is a leather jacket. There's a different feeling to that because we know deer are overpopulating anyway deer is popular to hunt you get venison from that there's usually more than one thing coming from the death of a deer leather jacket included but it's not like you're gonna like eat the mink or they're gonna you know hunt the mink because they're running over people on the freeway that's not the case so i feel like when it comes to the leather i'm like pro leather right now i could be convinced if like vegan leather I know a lot of companies are switching to that. If that was more sustainable for the planet or just in some way, just dramatically more ethical or better quality overall, I could be convinced. But I do just think like actual real leather, cowboy quality leather, Italian style leather, you know that that's going to be long lasting fabric and that's going to go really, really far with not only the look of it being timeless, but also just like that's going to last you. The faux leather usually just does not have that quality built into it. And it's just like plastic, which is worse for the environment than, you know, using some of those animal skins that God has given us for that purpose. But again, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to be like so rude to those deer and be like, die so I can have a jacket for fall. But also... It is nature's resource. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Okay. Um, belts, I think, will always be timeless. Now, the way we style the belt, what kind of belt? I'm thinking specifically, like, those big, chunky buckles have kind of been more in. This one's built into my shorts, if you can see that. But, um, like, the big cowgirl buckle, like, that's going to be trendy. But, like, a smaller black or brown leather belt with, like, a gold or silver buckle, something very, like, chic you know, Versace belts or Gucci belt. Those are always going to be a great idea. Okay. Oh, another thing that I think is trendy, not timeless for fall is suede. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Don't shoot the messenger. I just think suede comes and goes in waves. It comes and goes in suede. <laughs> Um, and it's a great look for fall. I like the like, you know, feel of it. I like uh, oversized like suede jacket or shacket. But then I think of like the suede boot and I think of how muddy it gets and how wet it gets and how it gets stained really easily. And I just think when I'm thinking of timeless wardrobe staples for fall, suede is more trendy. It's a more like once in a while that's styled well or there's a cute version of a suede thing, but it's not like, I don't know. I don't know. I might be wrong on that one, but that's just my take. 
Okay. Um, I think I got through all my trendies and now my timeless is mini skirts. I mentioned these earlier. I do think a mini skirt again in fall, the combo of like high boot short skirt. I love that combo. I also love doing like a long sleeve, like a pullover or a sweatshirt and shorts in the fall with like sneakers. I love it. I think it's just like the high low, like the little juxtaposition. It's just a fun thing for fashion. It feels very like in between seasons, a little transition-y. And I just think it's a fun look. And fall is really like the only time we get to like play with that without being too hot or too cold. So I love that. But I do think those mini skirts are kind of always try, try timeless for me. It does depend which one, obviously, like neutrals, pretty much always a safe bet for timeless suede or um, uh, what's the one with the lines corduroy. I think those are more trendy. They are very pretty and seem to be like consistently reappearing in fall fashion. But I mean, I have a corduroy skirt and I feel like sometimes I'm like, yeah, that's the vibe. And then some fall seasons I'm like, it's just not what I want to wear. But like a denim skirt, a leather skirt, brown, black. Um, I also have like a plaid skirt that I personally really like. I don't know if it's like timeless, but I think it's fun. Okay. Oh, and then two other things for the timeless. I have the knee high socks and or like full leg tights as timeless. I know there's some controversy there because tights sometimes look very specific. I'm talking about like a sheer tight or like a knit tight, maybe not the knit tight, but the sheer tight, like imagine like a black tight, like a stocking. That's nice. With like a, like a lotiony leg underneath, <laughs> you get like the little glimmer coming through your tight. I think that's cute. The knee high socks, specifically the sheer knee high socks are really trendy right now as per data, but make a fashion account. But I don't know if those are going to stay. I think those might be more of like a trendy thing. But I think knee highs in general, that like schoolgirl look or that academia look, you know, that that's kind of going to be timeless. I could see a lot of people from a lot of cultures wearing it. Guys, girls, I could see that being a really fun, timeless fashion trend. And then the last thing for the timeless category in the fall fashion realm, I think, are long trench coats. Not the creepy trench coats, a specific long trench, but like a beige or a light brown trench coat in the fall with sunglasses and like black mules strutting your little way through Times Square or Central Park in New York City. Pumpkin spice in hand, girls on a mission. I feel like that is such a fun look. I have a few that I've thrifted. And one is just like such a lightweight fabric that it gets so crinkly. It doesn't like hold its shape and it kind of looks like I'm wearing a napkin. True story. But I want to wear the other one a little bit more this fall. I thrifted these all from Goodwill bins. I think I got three of them for like $4. But I want to try them. I think it's a fun look. I think it's also practical. If you're cold or hot, you can just, you know, have that layer right there. If it's rainy, it's like built for that. I don't know. I think a trench... I think a trench is always in, in the fall. <laughs> but that's kind of all I have for today. I am so curious what you guys are into this fall, what you're wearing, what you're excited to continue wearing into Christmas season, into the winter, and what you're just like, no, like, please kill this trend right now. I don't want to see it anymore. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like I said, all of the shopping links, deals, discounts are in the show notes. Let me know what you're into this fall, and we will see you next week. Bye. I was so lame. Bye! Hey, is your skincare toxic? It turns out no one is really digging into the research as to what we're putting on our skin and how it affects us, especially as women. Oftentimes, skincare and beauty products are full of hormone-disrupting chemicals that can mess with your ovulation and toxic ingredients that do way more damage than good. Okay, I have to confess, I usually do not know what I'm putting on my face and which brands will counteract with each other. That's why I'm really, really happy to finally have Primally Pure in my home. Primally Pure is the cleanest skincare company I have ever come across, creating mindfully made skincare. Their stuff is sourced from animals and plants, and come on, what is more natural than that? 
I recently got their clarifying mask and no joke, I could almost eat every single ingredient on the list. Things like beef tallow, organic orange extract, raw honey, and vitamin E make the cut. And honestly, my skin feels super baby smooth after using it. Like I said, there are some clean, powerful ingredients in this socially conscious brand lineup, and I cannot recommend that enough, you guys. Take 10% off your order at Primally Pure by using code India and Stuff 10 at checkout. That's India and Stuff 10 at checkout, or just click the link in the show notes.